Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope everybody is having a great week. You're hanging in there. I know this quarantine is really starting to get to me. I don't know about you, but I'm starting to get really homesick for summer. Not necessarily for like the weather because it's beautiful here, but for all the activities that I normally do in the summertime, like have big barbecues and have our friends over and go to the beach and travel and all those fun things. But there is one thing that this quarantine cannot take away from us, and that is enjoying the flavors of summer. So today, I really wanted to share this dinner recipe with you that will get you out of a funk if you're feeling it too. It's for my seared salmon with a delicious cucumber dill sauce, and I'm gonna show you how to cook the fish perfectly. So if you're a first timer and you've never cooked fish before, don't worry. And then we're gonna serve it with a delicious orzo salad that can be served chilled with homemade pesto. There's nothing that screams summer more than homemade pesto and caramelized vegetables. So settle in, this is probably gonna be a long video, but I had to share the side dish that goes with the salmon because I kept thinking they're so delicious together that I just felt like I would cheat you if I just gave you the salmon recipe. So you're gonna get it all. <laughs> settle in, okay, let's get to it. So the first thing we wanna do is caramelize our vegetables for the orzo salad. I have two cups of diced shallots here and two cups of diced zucchini. We want to get this on a very high heat. Um, so if you have like a burner that's one of the hotter burners, use that one because this will really help us char our vegetables and get them really nice and caramelized. Then we're going to put a tablespoon of olive oil in the pan, just like that. And then you want to start with the shallots. So I have just sort of cut them into a rough dice here. One thing when you're trying to caramelize vegetables like this is make sure you have a wide pan. So this is about a 12 inch pan. That way you have a larger surface area for which to caramelize. If you have a smaller pan, they'll all get crowded and they'll start to steam up instead of you know really brown and caramelized. I also find a nonstick pan, for whatever reason, seems to help too. So we're gonna add our two cups of zucchini just on top, just like that. And then at this point, you can season with salt and pepper like that, there we go. Okay, and then once your vegetables are done, they'll look like this. See how gorgeous? All that charring, that is gonna give these vegetables great flavor. And I don't know, there's something about a charred vegetable that just feels really summery. Okay, so we can just set these aside while we get to work on our homemade pesto. Okay, now we're gonna multitask a bit. We're gonna get our orzo cooking. So I have a pound of orzo here. I just make the full batch. This salad will feed like six to eight people, but I don't know about you, this quarantine has just had me do dishes like constantly. <laughs> so anytime I can get a big batch of something and have it last throughout the week, I am all for that. So if you didn't wanna make this much, then just cut the recipe in half. All right, so we're getting that boiling and it won't take too long, so that's good. We'll put the lid on there. And then we're gonna get to making our homemade pesto. Homemade pesto is so easy to make. It's one of those things that just screams summer to me. As soon as I smell this basil, I am just transported back to my childhood, <laughs> my parents' summer parties. It's amazing how the sense of smell can do that, you know? So we're gonna go with two cups here, okay. To our basil, we are also going to add a garlic clove. I like to mince it first. I know that's like a little bit redundant because it's going into the food processor, but I find that the garlic just gets a little bit better distributed when you mince it ahead of time and you don't have to worry about like big chunks being in there. And then we're also gonna add three tablespoons of pine nuts. Now sometimes pine nuts can be really expensive. So you really can use any kind of nut. If you need a substitution, I typically will use almonds or walnuts or even cashews. So anything that's sort of a buttery nut will work. All right, then we're gonna put the lid on. We're gonna pulse this up. And then from time to time, you wanna scrape down the sides because it does get kind of stuck in there. So you can just scrape it down. Ah, the fragrance. I wish you guys were here to smell this. It's so delicious and summery. Okay, this is just what the doctor ordered for me, I tell you. Then once it's all minced up, then we can add the olive oil. So you wanna add it in a steady stream in the feed chute while it's running. So that is going to help us to create an emulsion. You'll see. There we go, just a little bit at a time. And they'll start to see it whip right up and create this beautiful pesto sauce. You can hear it too, you know, it sounds more like a sauce. And then we're gonna add our cheese. So I have a quarter cup of freshly grated Parmesan cheese. Go for the freshly grated. Sometimes that cheese that you buy in the little container, 
that's sort of sitting in the cheese aisle that's already been grated just does not have the flavor that freshly grated Parmesan cheese will. So it's worth the effort. And the cheese is more delicate, so you just don't wanna have the blade in there. Okay, then at this stage, I do like to season with salt and pepper. I always add the salt in after I add the cheese because depending on the brand of cheese, it can be pretty salty. So it's good to put the cheese in, then hit it with a little salt and pepper, and just to taste and keep tasting it until it is to your liking. But this looks pretty good. I think we are good to go. Let's see, should I taste it? Mm, so delicious, so good, okay. Let's check our orzo. Okay, we've got our orzo that has been cooled and drained and see how much it makes. <laughs> it does make enough to feed an army, but I'm telling you, it's delicious for lunch and dinner throughout the week. I like to do the pesto and the orzo first and just mix it up until everything is coated and combined. Then we have our fabulous caramelized vegetables here that I just put into a little bowl. We're gonna add that on top. Oh, those look so good. And then the other thing we're going to add, which I think is a great addition, are some of these pearl mozzarella balls, which once this salad is chilled, it just adds a really nice creamy, delicious texture and a little bit more protein if you are going to serve this as a main course for like a lunch or a salad. And then for a little crunch, I also like to add some pine nuts. So you bought the bag to make the pesto, so you might as well use them in this too. They're about the same size as the orzo, <coughs> And they just offer a really great little texture, a little crunch uh, in the salad. All right, one thing I forgot to add, the frozen peas. Don't forget the peas. <laughs> just defrost them with a strainer under hot water for just one to two minutes and then pop them in the salad and they add such a delicious freshness and they're also beautiful against the salmon. So don't forget the peas like I almost did. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is make our cucumber dill sauce. Now this is something that you can get done in the morning so that when it comes time for dinner, your sauce is all ready to go and the sauce will actually um, get more pronounced in flavor the longer it sits in the fridge. So it's a good thing to do a few hours before. So I have a English cucumber here that I am going to just grate with a box grater. And this is so we can get really nice, finely shredded cucumber. Now, if you don't have a box grater, you could also just chop it, that would be fine too. Okay, so this is about what we want, about a third of a cup. And then we are gonna put this in our yogurt sauce. So you can use Greek yogurt, you can use sour cream, you could even use creme fraiche if you wanted to. And then the next thing we wanna do is grate some fresh lemon zest. So you're looking for about a half a teaspoon or so. Okay, then we're also gonna add some garlic. So one clove should do it. Then we also want to add about a teaspoon of fresh lemon juice that in there. Then we're going to add some fresh dill. So dill is such a beautiful flavor combination with the cucumber um, and with the salmon. So it's a great thing to add. Um, and then lastly, we want to season with a little pepper and a little bit of salt. There. So how easy was that? That wasn't complicated, right? And then this is just going to go in the fridge until it comes time to cook our fish. Okay, now for our fish. So our salad is ready to go, our sauce is ready to go. So watch how easy this is when it comes time for dinner. You barely have anything to do. <laughs> okay, I have a beautiful salmon filet here that is about six ounces. So this recipe would feed about four to six people if you were using that many filets of salmon. I only wanted to make one since I don't have my crew here to eat all this food, it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe my kids, but it's past lunchtime. So this is gonna be my lunch. So I'll show you one and then you'll get the hang of the technique. But I'm gonna add a little salt on top and a little bit of pepper. Okay, then I'm gonna get my pan going here. So I have a large nonstick pan and I'm gonna use some coconut oil. Um, I really love to use the coconut oil because it allows you to get a nice sear on the fish and heat it at a high temperature without it smoking up the kitchen. So coconut oil has a high smoke point unlike olive oil. If you don't have coconut oil, and don't worry, it doesn't have like a coconutty flavor. If you don't have coconut oil, you could also use like vegetable oil. Now, let's have a little chat while we wait for this pan to heat up. <laughs> because there are two tips that I have to tell you about cooking fish. Number one is it's really a two-step process, if you ask me. I think that salmon especially does best on a cooktop as opposed to just putting it in the oven because you can really get a nice sear on it first. So that's what we're gonna do here. Once we get about a quarter of an inch of the salmon to be opaque, then we are going to flip it. I think the best way to show you guys is for me to grab this camera. <laughs> it's so easy when I do it like this. There we go. 
See, and now you can see, you see how that is? Let's see if I get lower. You see that lower third portion of the fish? That's when we want to flip. Looking good. Okay, now it's time to flip. So we're just going to go in here and give it a flip. Just help it with your hand. And that sear is so beautiful. And then at the same time, it's ready to go in the oven. Now, there are a lot of recipes that'll tell you, oh, cook salmon for five to seven minutes or eight to 10 minutes. And depending on the cut of your salmon and how thick it is, that can really vary. So I think the better thing to do is to use a meat thermometer like you would with a steak or some chicken. And I think that salmon is best done when it reaches 145 degrees or 150, then pull it out. That can be five minutes, it can be six minutes. I would not go past 160 degrees Fahrenheit because then you're gonna end up with a really dry piece of salmon and you will not be happy. Now I've got our fish on a plate here, all ready to go. I'm going to add some of this cucumber sauce. Now, if you want it to sort of pool over the side a little bit, you can add a little bit of water. So I did do this. I sort of thinned it just a little bit. I think it's really pretty when it sort of spoons over. And then we're also gonna add some fresh dill. I think it's pretty when you can keep the sprig whole like that. Just looks a little more garden fresh, right? Okay, then we are going to grate some radish. It's better actually if you grate it fresh on the fish. Almost looks like edible flowers, right? And now we're just gonna add a little spoonful of our beautiful salad, just on the side like that. I usually do two spoonfuls because once it starts to combine with that sauce, people can never have enough. They always want more. <laughs> so I just give it to them from the beginning. See, there you go. Doesn't that look delicious? So summery and beautiful. Now I would take a bite of this, but I only have one and I gotta go take a picture of it for my blog. <laughs> Sorry, trust me, it's really delicious. And I will see you back here next week. We'll do something sweet, something really decadent and delicious. All right, I'll see you then, bye.